Good morning. This is our beautiful load here today. Nice US weight load, almost max US weight load. I'll definitely have to drop the drop axle when we uh, go to the US. Some people think that that rear axle are spare tires. That's an axle that drops down, transfers some weight over to the front drives because in the US we got bridge laws. Basically the center of the back axle to the center of the first drive axle, you gotta measure all of that. And they've got laws about how much weight you can put on that distance of space. So if I drop that drop axle, I can carry more weight. So right now I'm legal in Canada. Those drop axles are illegal in Canada because it's a steer axle. So we have to have it up in Canada. But since we crossed the border, the US doesn't allow us to carry as much weight. Canada, we're allowed to carry a lot more weight. So we're legal in Canada with this weight. In fact, I could go a little more. But as soon as I cross the border to the US, this load is illegal. I'm too heavy. So I gotta drop that axle, making it legal. So it's always a tricky game of knowing what your pressure gauges read on weight to get the weight just right to make it legal in Canada and in the US. But once you get it down pat, it's pretty easy. Pretty easy. I've got it, I've got it figured out for this truck and trailer and that's one of the reasons I hate switching trailers all the time. Because if you're switching trailers, you don't know what the gauges have to read for maximum weight. And shippers like maximum weight. And I don't blame them, I would want maximum weight too. lights on that seems important in a foggy morning like this So yeah, we are in Grand Forks, Interfor. Really good people, never have to argue about them or about weight with them. I think I've been overweight once and then I just mentioned it to them and no problem. They pulled, uh, well, I went, I went and voluntarily went and scaled myself. I don't know if they would have made me go scale myself. I told, when I was overweight, I told them, I'm like, I'm gonna go down to the scale, weigh myself, I think I'm very close to weight, so I might be over. He goes, yeah, no problem. Came back, asked him to take a bundle off, done. Filled out the paperwork and we're good to go. So I always, come, I always enjoy coming to places like this because they're, they're trying to maximize the amount of weight to put on the truck, but they never pressure you to running illegal weights. Some places, actually very few places, but there's some places that always want to go overweight. It's like, no. And they're like, ah, the scale's always closed. You'll never get a ticket going that way. I'm like, don't care. What if I have an accident and somebody dies? Guess what? I'm going to jail for manslaughter or worse because I knowingly drove overweight. I'm going to jail if I knowingly break laws. And then either kill someone or even just damage someone or damage property. It's 
almost 8 a.m. plus one degree Celsius. It was uh, definitely warmer today morning than it has been a lot of mornings, so that was kind of nice. So we're just going to head home. This load goes to Summoner, Washington. Head home and deliver this load next week. Yep, there's a car hidden behind that rig. Oh, okay, never mind. They're just doing stuff down there. It's an illusion. There is no car. Welcome to Grand Forks. We're on the outskirts and driving through town. Dude, seriously. For the record, I am over speed already. I gotta slow down. I did not see that coming. I did see after I pulled onto the road that, oh, here comes a vehicle around the corner. They're gonna have to slow down. I unintentionally cut them off, but while I was pulling on the road, there was no vehicle coming. So. Beautiful, soggy and wet Grand Forks. All the trees are naked now. Two weeks ago we were talking about how beautiful these leaves were. It seems with these freezing temperatures, there's a pipe that has been busted and they're tearing up the road because somewhere there's a pipe leaking water all over the place. Emergency construction.
Welcome party. We're still locked up. It's 8 a.m. Hmm. Note to self. They're definitely on some kind of winter hours. If I'm delivering there, no point of showing up at 7 a.m. Almost the whole lumber industry starts at 7 a.m. From lumber mills to warehouses to retail stores, everything in between usually start at 7 a.m. myself a granola bar. Hungry. Hungry, hungry hippo. I wish they weren't building a McDonald's here. I wish they were building a nice restaurant here. Right by Cal Tire. It'd be nice to get a truck repair shop and a nice restaurant. Maybe even a de decent medium hotel. And a big truck parking area. Right now we just parked in the empty lot behind Cal Tire, but eventually that will be developed and we will lose that parking area. day of thick fog. It should be bright daylight by now.
Why not run the yellow line? Waka, 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 waka. See, I do it too sometimes. <coughs> Looking in the mirror, watching the people behind me a little too much, and a waka, waka we go. Somebody asked me a great question. Why do I always run with my hazard lights or four-way flashers on? Here they come. Four-way flashers are going on. It's a legal requirement in BC anyway to do so. The rule just reads any slow-moving vehicle must have four-way flashers on. My rule of thumb is if I am doing 20 kilometers less than the posted speed limit, my four-way flashers come on. Because the closing rate of vehicles catching up with me, doing 20 kilometers faster than me, could catch them off guard. So my rule is 20 kilometers below the speed limit, I consider myself a slow moving vehicle. 20 kilometers would be, what, 12, 13 miles per hour? consider myself a slow vehicle. I'm in 13th gear, which would be 6 direct on the traditional H pattern. 12th gear, 5th over. Had another great question. What do you mean when you're talking about direct and over? So 18 speed transmission really only has nine gears. Nine times two is 18. So you have a transmission under your floor that's got those nine gears, but behind you in the axles, there's another gearbox, we call it the splitter, that has high and low range. So, first gear direct would be first gear, low gear. Over is high gear. I'm not sure why the terms direct and over became the thing that are used. But anytime I say direct, think a direct, a direct line from the transmission to the axles. If it's over, it's like an overdrive gear in the rear axles that has gone to high gear. Makes sense? Kind of? I'm trying to... I'm not a gear head. I'm not all of that technically inclined. So maybe somebody out there can say it much better than I do. Fifth over right, right now. back it, I guess the transmission actually see that's it's more complicated than that the H pattern only has low one two three four so there's a high and low in the transmission up front too That's why we say direct and over because there's a high and low up front. So you go, you have a really, really heavy load and you're gonna have to go through every single gear. You start in low direct, then you go low over. First gear direct, first gear over, second gear direct, second gear over third gear direct, third gear over, fourth gear direct, 
fourth gear over. Then you go back to first gear high direct. First gear high over. Second gear high direct. Second gear over. Third gear high direct. Third gear high over. Fourth gear high direct. Fourth gear high over. It's complicated. So that's why direct and over is used. That makes sense because you can't say high and low because the transmission up front already has a high and low. Yep, okay, answered my own question. And, and the low gears, you only use the low gears at the very beginning. You, when you go to high, you don't reuse the low gear. In theory, I guess an 18-speed transmission technically has 20 gears. Because you could go high, low, somewhere in there. in reverse high and low too so the 18 speed transmission I think you could technically say has 22 gears but two of those gears are never used and uh, you got the two reverse gears up to 70, 72 kilometers an hour. Speed limit's 100. So as soon as we hit 80, the four-way flash was come off, give or take. Because I've noticed a couple of comments going, you sure like running with that right signal on. It's like, no, the four-way flash is on. Both the left and right signal are flashing seeing it from the camera point you're only seeing you're only seeing one side of the truck but both sides are flashing and it's a legal requirement man and I think it's a good rule I know there are states where it's illegal like California it's flat out illegal to use your four-way four flashers unless it's an emergency so different laws different places different places different laws yeah, that'd probably be more accurate Sixteenth gear, seven over, and seven over is technically third gear high over. It's on the actual shifter. I have an automated manual transmission. I don't have a shifter like. I don't have the H pattern, but on a H pattern manual transmission trans, manual transmission shifter, it only has four gears plus reverse and low. I'm still hungry. Second granola bar.
Yeah, manual transmission drivers have a lot of work in there because you're shifting between the H pattern plus you have two knobs beside the shifter that go high and low in the transmission and in the splitter. Hold Summit. I think today's video will be from Grand Forks to Midway. Pull into the Midway scale. be home at about 10 30 a.m. That's kind of nice. Two hours from now, a little over two hours. Yeah, I'll be a little longer than that because I'm stopping. And stopping in midway because I legally need to pull over and do a load secure. It's like that's a good spot to end the video right away too. Convenient spot. We got plus two up here, okay. It's warmer on top of the mountain than in the valley. That's kind of interesting. I was just seeing the snow on the side of the road. I'm like, ah, could the roads be slippery? But plus two, it's unlikely. Having said that, plus two is the air temperature, not the road temperature. So but this time of year, most of the time, the road temperature is warmer than the air temperature. But soon, we're gonna get far enough into winter where the road temperature is actually cooler than the air temperature. And then, uh, you gotta keep that in mind. As a rule, usually four or five degrees warmer, the road itself. So usually, if uh, in the truck it says minus two, minus three, the roads are usually still wet. Unless you get a lot of snow and then you got compact snow and then it's then it's slippery wet on top of the compact snow which is incredibly slippery. But usually the earlier snowfalls like this you have to worry more about black ice at night and slush during the day. If your tire catches that slush you go for a ride. the speed limit, 18th gear, which would be 4th gear, high, over. Just to make it more complicated than I've made it in the past. <laughs> Always making it more complicated than it needs to be. low load the center of weight is nice and low I can shoot through these corners at a pretty decent speed so 
another downside of this time of year. Anytime a car passes you, you get road grime all over the windshield. Wilgris Lake on the right hand side. You guys get glimpses of it every now and then. threw a rock into the windshield but I don't think it added another rock chip. Um, I've noticed that huge difference. Remember how many times I had a windshield that was cracked running the International? How many cracked windshields have I had in this truck? I've had this truck what? Three years now? Over three years? Three and a half? I think three and a half years. I got it in spring a little over three years ago. If I remember correct. And I had that rock right away that cracked the windshield. And I got a brand new windshield. It would be exactly three years ago, give or take. Well, because of inspections. Yeah, almost exactly three years ago, I got a brand new windshield put on in. And since then, I've gotten five small rock chips, but nothing that has cracked the windshield. So we haven't replaced. This is only the second windshield this truck has. Meanwhile, the International, we put a new windshield in it on fall, or in fall, I get a new windshield in spring, new windshield in fall, new windshield in fall, in spring. It's just two windshields a year. Uh, it's just what that truck did. I think the W9L with a big front hood blocks a lot of the rocks. I think I take a lot of the rocks into the front hood instead of the windshield. Especially the big ones that cause the big cracks. up on Greenwood, the smallest city in Canada, because to get the name city you have to have a certain size of population, and this city does not have the population, I don't think they even have the population to be considered a small town, it's 
probably more like a village. I think it might be a town. It could be considered a small town. But they have the classification legally as a city due to the fact that the population used to be big enough to be a city. So most of Greenwood is really a ghost town. Two uh, historic things that I know about Greenwood is, I guess you could say the railroad also came through here, is it used to have a huge mine, Greenwood mine, you can see the slag hills up on the side. The tunnel used to be train track going to the mine, there used to be two tunnels. You'll see the old abandoned tunnel, there used to be two of them side by side. They had to tear one down to build to build a new road. And the other notable history of Greenwood is it was a Japanese internment camp during World War II. Canada basically rounded up all the Canadian Japanese that were loyal to Canada, but we didn't trust them rounded them all up and put them in towns and basically they were prisoners and uh, Greenwood was one of those internment towns internment camps over here and that pickup that passed us a little bit ago no lights on a bit dangerous in this kind of weather there is an old Canadian law that's not enforced I wish it was enforced I wish police gave out tickets All vehicles must have headlights on when driving. You'll see most Canadian cars have headlights on because it's illegal to manufacture or sell a new car without daytime running lights. Most of the cars you see with headlights on have no taillights on. That's another law I wish they would change. It's like, let's make it illegal to sell a car in Canada, manufacture a car in Canada, without having daytime running lights and daytime taillights. With LEDs, it's like they're not using any electricity. Make the road safer for sure. It's weird to me that people have such. Here's the tunnel. There used to be another tunnel right beside it for westbound traffic. That tunnel was for eastbound traffic. And that, that ridge that the, the tunnels 
went under was the railroad going to the mine. I guess not just going to the mine, it went all the way through left, east west, it, it kept going, but. Historic Greenwood. They advertise the mining part. They don't really <laughs> advertise the Japanese internment camp. It's a bit of a blemish on the Canadian history. We always go, yeah, our ancestors did some silly things, but we would never do that today. It's like, yeah, but we still kind of are. And we would do the same thing again. We're humans. We will do that. History has proved it over and over and over. And when things are going good, we don't do things like that. When things are going rough and hard, very quickly we degenerate to doing nasty stuff to other people. The limit is 50 through here, but I believe the downtown section here should be 30. It's just definitely a walking part of the town. I mean city, city, walking part of the city. And you have people crossing the road and chatting and talking to each other and it's, it's a gathering place. This little section here is a gathering place and a bit of a tourist trap. So in the past, this all these buildings would have been next to each other. Kind of like on the right where it's just one building snugged in against each other. All these empty lots you see on the left hand side, right side, so you see all these empty spots that would have all been packed with buildings shoulder to shoulder to each other back in the day. you guys can see all the slag to the right hand side the man-made mountain it's just all molten slag from the mining process I guess they refined the uh, ores over here too We're still beside this leg. A molten dam of lava. Molten rock. A 
maybe not anymore. We were. It's pretty big. They actually turned it into a provincial park before they realized that, hey, this is all poisonous, all this old slag, you know, it's, it's hazardous. We really don't want to have people hiking through this and camping in all this poisonous stuff. And you're fine walking through it, but staying in it, living in it, camping in it, maybe not the safest idea. Whenever a car goes wide to the white line like that, I'm like, are my beacon lights on? My wide load lights? Like, is, is there a reason why I'm scaring you? And yes, big trucks run closer to the yellow line than small cars because we are so much wider than small cars. See, there's still molten slag here on the right-hand side. You can see that is molten lava that's been poured out there. So that mine must have been pretty darn huge back in the day. To me, I, I don't know the history of the mine. To me, it almost looks like down here where all the slag is, that's where the foundry was. And I think the mine was actually up on the other side of the town, east of the town. Because I think I remember seeing a big open pit mine up there. I think they mined it up there and then, and then uh, smelted it all down here.
see the line where the railroad is up on the right hand side there. If you see a clean cut on the side of the cliff, that's always the railroad. Plus one here. Why is it that on top of the mountains it's it's warmer than down in the valleys? The roads look wet. I'm not getting any moisture spraying off of the road, which makes me concerned that they're slippery, but the temperature and my grip when I hit the throttle, it all seems to be there, so it doesn't seem slippery. But it's I think close to that line. Like yesterday where we were definitely hitting some of those slippery sections on some of the corners. Midway. I guess it probably was originally called Midway Station, I, mean, I would guess, because it's midway between Greenwood and uh, Rock Creek. I always thought, big picture, I'm like, Midway, between what is this Midway of? It's like, no, no, you got to think small picture. When these towns got named, the only way to get through here was via railroad, so this is a railroad station midway between Greenwood and Grand Forks. And you see the train, well it's just a museum, but Obviously, it's next to the old train track. You can see that museum up ahead. I'm guessing that is where the old train station maybe was. Just a guess. Coming up here on the right hand side. Railroad, railroad, railroad was just on the other side of these buildings here. All right, so that was Midway. I'm going to pull over here into this. I'm not going to go scale myself. I'm light enough. I don't have to worry about it. But I'm going to pull into the scale. It's a nice big open yard. Do my load secure check. But we're going to call it a day here, so happy Friday, enjoy your weekend, you guys hit that join button for only like 99 cents a month Canadian, I'll see you tomorrow on the bonus video. Which I have yet to shoot, and I'm almost home, I know, I know pushing it, huh? I won't shoot that video till next week. I'm not going to shoot tomorrow's video till next week. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's just how the way and how things work. And then, of course, everybody that does not hit the join button, you can join me on the other channel, uh, Sleep with a Trucker, for a Sunday video, a nice long video with me not talking at all, no chit chat, no radio. Not that the radio is on on this channel, but nice ASMR, relaxing, studying, sleep music. Music, ambient noise, definitely no music. Or back here on Monday again. So thank you guys so much for watching.
really appreciate all of you guys for making it to the end of the video. I am out of here. You guys rock. Thank <laughs> you.